Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, I want to talk about a topic and an area of discussion that I don't normally hit on with this channel, and that is leaks and rumors. There's been plenty of leaks and rumors about Pokemon Legends Arceus with its release date only a few weeks away. And before BDSP came out, there were plenty of rumors about that game as well. A lot of reports and rumors about development and development problems. There was a lot of that everywhere. There was a report that came out in the last couple days that alarms me, and it alarms me for a couple different reasons, and I wanted to discuss it today, and that is Game Freak's interference with Ilka in the development of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. That being said, let's jump right into things. So if you're around in the Pokemon community, you've probably heard this getting thrown about in the last couple days, and it's a report and some theorizing by members of the community that Ilka originally had a much grander plan in place for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Not only did it involve adding a lot more of Platinum to these games, but also adding a lot of new things that didn't exist in any of the original versions. And the story and the narrative goes with this report that Game Freak, and specifically Junichi Masuda and some of the higher-ups at Game Freak, didn't want them to take these big swings with BDSP, and really worked to curtail the development and change it and mold it into something they preferred. And that's according to this source, how we eventually got Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl in their form that we eventually ended up playing just a couple months ago. There's a lot to this report. There's an entire piece from it, which essentially says there were ideas that Ilka wanted to bring to BDSP that Game Freak liked so much that they decided to tell them, no, you're not going to do this in BDSP. Instead, you're going to play how we want it to be played, and we're going to take these ideas and implement them into Legends Arceus. That's a wild claim, and it's it's created a lot of community discussion about Game Freak's role in developing Pokemon in general. I want to say, right off the bat, I don't know if I believe these reports. One of the biggest pieces of evidence that's getting thrown around are some of the uh, some of the art pieces that Ilka made as concept art for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl before development began. And a lot of people have pointed out that these art pieces look a lot more detailed. They look like there were bigger plans than what was originally that was eventually implemented into Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And the fact that we're seeing so much innovation with Legends Arceus and absolutely nothing in BDSP kind of points to some sort of delayed, changed, possibly in the end rushed development for BDSP. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss a new upload. Now, as I mentioned before, with all of this being said, I don't think I believe this report. I don't, this doesn't sound like how the Pokemon company would operate. This doesn't sound like something that would actually happen in the real world. The concept art piece is what started to alert me to the fact that I don't know if I really buy this. If you've ever seen concept art for any video game, for any movie, it's always a lot grander and more detailed than the eventual product that you get. Even when you see new buildings in the real world under construction, they'll always come out with schematics and with uh, recreations, artists' renditions of what the eventual building is going to look like. And it almost never looks identical. There's always going to be things that are different or changed. When you're imagining a world that you're crafting in a video game, you're trying to really imagine things that'll then help you frame your, your state of mind when developing the game. So you're going to go grander, you're going to go bigger, you're going to include things that you wouldn't necessarily then put into the game. So a lot of this concept art, I don't think points to some sort of change development path. I just think it points to the fact that it's concept art. It's artists' renditions of what different cities and locations in the Pokemon world look like. The video game was never going to look like these artists' renditions. That's simply not how this sort of thing works. And I've seen a lot of members of the community start to run with this idea and peddle a, what I believe is a conspiracy theory, in an attempt to disparage Game Freak, in an attempt to disparage the Pokemon company. Listen, there are plenty of things to criticize Game Freak about. There are plenty of things to criticize the Pokemon company about. You don't need to invent 
criticisms to go after this company. You don't need to invent criticisms to call out decisions that this company has made with their franchise over the last five to 10 years. The criticisms are real and right there for you to take and run with. You don't need to create a grandiose story to try to build some larger narrative. Ilka was a developer that hasn't made a lot of massive third party game, uh, not third party, massive AAA games before. They made Pokemon Home. That was their biggest uh, contribution to the Pokemon franchise before BDSP. They were tasked with creating this remake because Game Freak had a different idea for what they wanted to do in their return to Hoenn, Hoenn Sinnoh. But they knew fans had this expectation that we get uh, recreation remakes every couple years with this franchise. So they gave it to an outside studio and they made it. And I'm sure the budget wasn't huge, but this wasn't the focus of the Pokemon company at this point in time. The focus of the Pokemon company at this point in time is clearly Pokemon Legends Arceus. And that's not to say you can't be critical of the product we got for BDSP. As I mentioned in my review, just a few days ago, there are so many things to criticize with this game. The $60 price tag for what we got for many people is not worth it. This is my biggest issue. We're running with a conspiracy and an idea based on individual reports from leakers with sources that are never fully accurate. And that's why when you go to my description of this video, you're not going to find links to these specific sources. You're not going to find links to Reddit threads or Instagram posts on Pokemon accounts that only grow by peddling every single source that they see on 4chan. I want to give my thoughts on this. That's what this channel is here for. And I think we can have a civilized discussion about where Pokemon is as a franchise without jumping down every single rabbit hole and trying to come up with grandiose conspiracies about this company when there's, as I mentioned six times now, I don't, I apologize that I'm beating a dead horse. There's plenty to criticize that is real and exists and is right in front of us. Now for a moment, let's say this report is completely accurate. That Game Freak and specifically this would have been the Pokemon company as an organization went to Ilka and said, we want you to make this game a certain way. This is the Pokemon company's property, you guys. This is their intellectual IP. They can do whatever they want with it. And whether or not we buy it is our decision. If they want to make a completely faithful remake, that's their prerogative. If they want to hire a developer to make a completely faithful remake, that's their prerogative. Ilka works for the Pokemon company. Ilka was paid to make this game. The Pokemon company theoretically coming in and saying you need to do this, this, and this is their prerogative. They can do that if they want. And when that game eventually comes out and it's something that the fans don't like, then it becomes our ability and our right to be critical of them, to be critical of the dev if we choose to. Maybe the discussion here is more nuanced. Maybe some Pokemon fans are saying, listen, we shouldn't direct our frustration and our anger about Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl on Ilka because the developers were just doing as they were instructed and as what they were paid for. And that's totally fair. We should focus our efforts on going after the Pokemon company. If that's what you want to do, that is totally fair with me. I'm down with that. Let's be critical of the things we love. It can only make them better in the end. But running with this conspiracy, which it, it, that is what it is, with no real proof or backing except for some, some leakers and some concept art that doesn't necessarily match up with a game, doesn't really make a ton of sense. The other thing I would add to this is if there were ideas in BDSP's development that Game Freak really liked and wanted to add to Legends Arceus, Legends Arceus is the more ambitious game. Legends Arceus is the more exciting game. It has been from when these games were originally announced. I want as many good ideas in that game as possible. So just from a selfish perspective, I don't have a problem with Legends Arceus taking the best ideas. I don't, I really don't have an issue with it. And it's not scummy, because I've seen some people describe it as that, that the Pokemon company tries to put their best ideas into the game that they are developing in-house. I don't think that's a problem. We're getting two game releases in the span of three months. We're getting an open-air Pokemon game that looks incredibly promising, and we got a faithful remake that had its issues. 
but we're getting that open air Pokemon game. We're getting that more advanced experience that so many people for so many years claimed they wanted to see. And listen, it's a little strange because of the timing of the release, it doesn't feel as if there's a ton of hype for Legends Arceus or as much as there should be right now, even though there appears to be a lot of optimism. My only point in discussing all of this is to say the Pokemon community needs to take a step back and really examine what our dialogue is on these subjects and really examine what we want to get out of having this sort of debate. It's all well and good to discuss these leaks and discuss what could have been with BDSP and what Game Freak potentially interfering with its development means for the broader franchise. But when we jump into assuming everything we read is true, I think we run into a lot of problems and I think it takes our expectations for all of these games in the future and whatever DLC we get for Legends Arceus, which will probably come, and puts it at a point where I don't think it's fair to place it. That's just my two cents. <laughs> I would love to hear what you guys think about this rumor down below. And I know I've said to you guys in the past, I don't love covering rumors and leaks, but this one got on my nerves. This one got on my nerves, not just for what it was and what the implications of it could be, whether it's true or not, because those implications change depending on what that answer is, but also what the community is saying in response. So let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think? And if you enjoyed this little ranty video, please be sure to leave a like. And as I mentioned before, subscribe to the channel so you never miss any more content. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.